So now we have um, introduced uh, all those type of the data containers, uh, like data warehouse, databases, um, and also data lake. So uh, next, let's talk about the ETL. So you may have already uh, have this feeling that ETL is actually the key process that to handle the big data. So yes, so no matter what data resource you have, okay, no matter what data resource you have, so you can put that one uh, either into the uh, relational database, okay, uh, or the data warehouse. Or uh, what you can do is that you can, so if the data is uh, highly unstructured, so you can put that one into a uh, data lake first, uh, and next you can go through this ETL to load the data into either RDS or the data warehouse, and next you can use either SQL to query the data, or you can use other BI analytic tools. Okay, so to uh, to do the to visualize the data, so which uh, I prefer. Um, or if you know the machine learning, etc., or AI, so you can load the data from the data lake by using for machine learning or AI. Okay, so for example, images, videos that cannot be stored in those data warehouse or data uh, data lake. So what is the ETL? Okay, so. As you can imagine that, so when when people handle the data, so they spend 60% of, of their time in data cleaning and also data organizing. And they spend almost 20% of their, their time in collecting data. Okay, so in total that they are 80% time that they are handling the data, do some ETL process or collect the data and there's only 20% time that they spend on actually analyzing those data. Okay, so ETL is a very, very important uh, step or process uh, in data analytics. <clears throat> so ETL is a process that of collecting data from the raw data and transforming data into a common type. So the type can be uh, the structured that right, to be in a database again or data warehouse, or even can be some other time that you can save into the another data lake, or in another data bucket within a data lake. So, uh, for example, if you want to filter some images, also videos, and to to just select specific images, videos into a, into another uh, bucket, into another position, so you can also do that through the ETL. Uh, so the new data is loaded into a final location that will be available for the analytic analysis and also inspection. Uh, so this is the a visualization that shows the ETL process. So basically you have your data that collected either in your business, uh, in your studies, uh, in your research, and you can put the data <coughs> either go through the ETL directly or or you can put the data into the data lake first and then go through this ETL. So after this ETL process, you can save the data, save the curated data into a final location. So that can be a data warehouse uh, or even can be a database. A data mart is a small scale uh, data warehouse. Or you can put that back to the data lake for the other uh, type of the data analytics. Okay, so that is a, a process of the ETL. Um, the technologies that has been used, widely used in the ETL process is called Hadoop. Okay, so that is our part Hadoop. So Hadoop is a distributed processing architecture that uh, the tasks of the ETL are mapped into a cluster of the servers. And those servers are cheaper instances so that the, the, the task can be processed into parallel. Okay, okay. 
Uh, so Hadoop has <coughs> several products. They have the Apache Spark, uh, MapReduce. So Spark is an in-memory uh, data process. MapReduce is uh, has been very famous uh, in the past few years. And they also have the other uh, like high enough peak to manage uh, the process. Um, we frequently use the Hadoop distributed file system, so that is HDFS for the processing. So the data is transformed into HDFS, and we're using the Spark or the MapReduce to, to process the data. And the results of the computation that are performed by those servers are then reduced into a single output. So th those are two steps. The first one step is called map. Uh, okay, and the second step is called reduce. Okay, and uh, in a Hadoop, so it is similar like the uh, um, the data warehouse Redshift. We also have a mass node to control the distribution of the tasks, and we also have many servers that to do the real job. Okay. So uh, some map re, uh, servers and also some reduced servers. Okay, uh, so we are now going to the detail about our patch Hadoop because that may take uh, another week that uh, to talk about the the Hadoop structure and also it is also um, a, a very quick, fast developing data framework. So. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested, and you can search online and also to see what is uh, Hadoop and also other parts. So what I want to tell you is actually the map reduce process. So that is actually the key feature of this uh, Hadoop. Uh, so that is called map reduce. Okay. So map reduce means that so, so for example we uh, we have a very giant. Uh, data set, okay. So for example, the the, the uh, it can be a text file. So let's say uh, several terabyte. And if you are using a single computer, a single server to process, uh, um, so that the computer may not be that powerful. So for example, if this one is one terabyte, okay, and your computer may have just let's say fifty gigabyte storage. Okay, so then it, this this computer is impossible to process this data. So, so the story behind MapReduce is that we will um, split the data uh, into multi into small chunks. Okay, so into many small chunks. So those like uh, several input files, and we will use several multiple computers, so multiple servers to do the job, to, to analyze the job. So that is a two process. One is called map process, and one is called the reduce process. Okay, so that uh, because for each single server uh, map and also reduce server, they, they are only handle, handling a small chunk of the data set, so they can do that very faster. And other servers are doing the job in the same time, so that we can reduce the time that to hand um, to process the data. And finally, we will have our result, and we can aggregate the result into a single output. Okay, so that is the story that behind map reduce. Let's see one example, so that can um, help you to make more sense. So for example, that we have a very, very huge document and we want counting the, the word fox. Okay, so we want to count how many times that the fox has, uh, the word fox has been used in that, uh, in those huge um, documents. Okay, so here we have multiple instances. So three instances to handle the text. So we, we split that document into three text files. Okay, and for the text files, so again, we 
uh, extract each single word. So those are three three computers are doing those uh, um, at the same time. And so for the document, we split the, those single words so that the pig, brown, fox, the fox and hound. So fox and so we are looking for the fox. And next we count, okay, so how many times the fox handle are showing up in this text and how many times that the fox has been used on this text and also how many times the fox has been used on this time, on this. Okay, so once we have that result, so that's the map part, we each computer will report, okay, so for, for the first instance, the fox has been used four times. For the second instance, the fox has been used three times. On the third instance, they count that the fox has been used three times through those, you know, those documents that they are dealing with, so three times. And finally, we reduce the result. <clears throat> so we accurate result. Okay, so we sum all, all those together. So that is a very easy job. And we know that, okay, so in total, that the fox has been used 10 times. Okay, so now we have this output file. All right, so and to sum up, so we split the entire giant document into small chunks, and we use multiple instances to count that specific chunk of the document. And after each computer instance have, has their uh, results, and we aggregate, we aggregate each all the results together so that we can report the final result. Okay, and we have we can have multiple reducers. So for example, this reduce reduce server count fox, and probably we have another reduce. Okay, to count the word to aggregate the word. Let's say the cat. Okay, etc. Uh, so they can report the cat to, to this reduce server. Okay, so that is uh, a very quick and also simple example of the net reduce.